Okay, this is the second part of our lesson on writing quadratic equations. In the last video, we learned how to identify a function table as being linear, exponential, or quadratic. So now let's just focus on the quadratic. So we have three different ways we can write quadratic equations. It depends on what piece of information you're given is which one you're gonna use. So we're going to take a look at when you use standard form. And again, if you need to pause this video at any time, please do so. So we're going to take a look at a function table. I'm going to tell you two things to look for to know to use the standard form to create our equation. First of all, you have to be given the input values in sequential order, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. There's no gaps. They're born in order. And you are given the y-intercept. So we know we have the y-intercept as 0, negative 2. So I'm going to switch over colors, go with blue. So what we need to do is to go ahead and identify that our C value is going to be negative two. So over here, we're going to write all the stuff that we're given or that we can um, determine. So our C value is the y-intercept, so it's negative two. We can find our A value by finding the second difference of our outputs and dividing it by two. So from negative five to negative two was plus three. From negative two to seven was plus nine. From seven to 22 was plus 15. And then from 22 to 43 was 21. Okay, so this first difference tells me it is not linear. Now we're gonna see if there is a second difference. From 3 to 9 is going up by 6, 9 to 15 is plus 6, and 15 to 21 is plus 6. So our second difference is 6. So to get your A value, you take your second difference and you divide it by 2. So our A value is 3, our C value is negative 2. The B value is what we're going to be finding. So remember, just like when you're trying to create any function equation, you're going to take an ordered pair from your table and insert for your x and your f of x. Now, since we have already used the y-intercept, 0, negative 2, we're not going to choose that point. So we can just choose. These are two small values, and they're both positive. So I'm going to put 7 in for my f of x. My A, we said, was 3. My X value is 1 when Y is 7. We don't know the B. My X is 1, and my C is minus 2. So all I did is put in the order point 1, 7 into my function. So I have all values except for B, and now we'll be able to find the actual value of B. So we're going to do order of operations and simplify this side of the equation. So I have 1 squared times 3, b times 1, minus 2. Let's collect like terms, and I have b plus 1. Now let's get the b by itself, so subtract 1 from both sides, and I have a b value of 6. Now we can write our equation in standard form. 3 times x squared plus the 6 that we just found from over here times x minus 2. Okay, let's try one more. Again, pause the video if you need time to write this table in your notebook. To use standard form to write a quadratic equation, first of all, our x values need to be in sequential order. I believe this value should be a 2. So just change that to a 2. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is make sure we are given the C value. Okay, so our given. We know that my C value is 4, and now let's find the A value. So again, if we're using standard form because our input values are in order, and we have the y-intercept, those two things must be present. Now, we are going to find the first difference. So from negative 8 to 2, that went up by 10. From 2 to 4 was up 2. From 4 to negative 2 
was down 6, and then from negative 2 to negative 16 is going to go down 14. So that's the first difference. Definitely not a linear function. Now we're going to find the second difference. From 10 to 2 is going down 8. From 2 to negative 6 is down 8. And from negative 6 to negative 14 is down 8. So our second difference is constant, so that means it's quadratic. We're going to take the second difference and we're going to divide it by 2. Now we're going to find the B value. So we're going to substitute our A value is negative 4. Our C value is plus 4. And we do not know the B value. So let's choose a point. Um, let's just, we can just use this. You can use any point other than the point that's already been used, which was our y-intercept. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 for x, using parentheses. I'm going to plug in 2 for f of x. a is negative 4. My x value is negative 1. We don't know the b value. That's what we're going to find. My x value, again, is negative 1, and my c was plus 4. Okay. Order of operations, we're going to evaluate this term first. Exponents, that's positive 1 times negative 4. B times negative 1 plus 4. So we have 2 equals. We're going to combine negative 4 and 4. That gives me 0, so I just have negative B. Okay, now we need to divide both sides by the negative 1. And my B value is negative 2. Now let's write our function. f of x equals my a value times x squared minus 2 for my b value, and then my c value is plus 4. Again, when you're going to use standard form, you have to have the y-intercept, and your x values have to go in sequential order. This way you can actually find the second difference. And then once you find the second difference, like here in negative 8, you divide it by 2.